Okay, another thing that uh, that we want our middles to know if they are or aren't going to do is front. And what we mean here is front the opposing middle attacker. And so you can see this is this could be lots of things, right? It could be a dedicate, it could be a front, it could be a five step uh, crossover move. But but we see number five, your middle moving with the opposing middle attacker. So we would call this a front. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and again, we kind of use these a little bit interchangeably. And it could, like I said, I, I don't know. I would say we do a lot more dedicating and a lot less fronting overall. Um, but it, sometimes it looks the same. And so uh, yeah, I never want to get in a position like that. You know, we got lucky there a little bit where we, we left our uh, left side blocker out to dry against an All-American. And uh, <laughs> we, our, our left side blocker made a great move to, to get a stuff. Um, but I think, and if I remember this game correctly, uh, there was heavy, uh, emphasis on the middle, um, in this scenario. And that was a back row attack that we were facing. And so, you know, that was some reasoning to, to take, to leave that alone. But, uh, yeah, I think when there's, whenever you see numbers jump, you know, 50% plus that they're going to go to the middle, uh, it makes a lot more sense to go with their middle, um, but again, you might be putting your middle close to the action. It looks like Keegan's doing that here with, uh, with this team. Yeah. So Keegan, you're fronting the middle here, but even if she sets the outside now, that front is a dedicate. Yeah. Again, you in this match, we, we thought Hawaii was pretty talented on quicks and row one was a stack. And sometimes people can have a hard time setting that slide and, uh, they're really stacking because they want to get their outside, uh, the ball easier. And so, Sometimes that triggers a, a lot of fronting or dedicating when we see people switch into that formation. And then can you talk about the philosophy, the tactic of not fronting? When do you not want to necessarily front? Um, we don't generally like to front when we've asked right front to help, I think is one consideration. We think uh, right front is in a called read and we have okay. assistance, then, then that's, we're not generally gonna, I mean, if we're fronting and we're reading, we're playing uh, someone that we're terrified of, you know, that we think is, is worthy of everything. So this is a more standard package, I think. Like we're honoring this middle on a perfect pass, um, so that would be one one situation. If we don't front and we load, we're making a statement about how good we think our defenders are relative to that hitter's capabilities. So, Chris, you're not fronting here, but she reads it and makes it. Little two step shuffle move. Yeah, I would say similar to Keegan's last play, our, our right side didn't help as well as his right side did. Um, but again, it's what does that shot chart look like? Are they heavy on the, on the, uh, in this case, a, a gap? If the numbers aren't there, it makes it really difficult for us to pay a lot of attention. You know, we don't want to leave too many, too many hitters in our anywhere at any time, one on one, unless, like Keegan said, we, we feel like our defense could handle it uh, if someone were to be left alone.